Hey guys, welcome to Science Class with Mr. Reynolds. Today we're going to continue working on this work in simple machines lesson by talking about two more equations. Okay, This one is going to be mechanical advantage. Now, most machines change the size of the force applied to them. Okay, We need this equation to help us figure this out. The mechanical advantage tells you how many times larger or smaller the output force is than the input force. And this will show you how efficient the machine is, which we're going to get into later. So let's look at it. This is one of those equations that's kind of, once again, counterintuitive. We think in linear terms, something happens, then something else happens. We have an input, which generates an output. But with this, we have to do with just the opposite. So um, mechanical advantage equals the output force divided by the input force. Looks kind of difficult, but it's, it's really not. I have an example here. So this top one up here, we always need to remember to take in the, in the equation the right-hand side divided by the left-hand side if you're going in order like this. Most of the time it will be written that way, almost as if they're trying to trick you or something. I'm not trying to trick you, I'm just trying to show you how it usually is written. So with this example, me mechanical advantage is 16 newtons over 32 newtons. So if you do, do this simple math here, it's just going to be 16 divided by 32, which is 0 0.5. 0 0.5 what? Just 0 0.5, okay? With this equation, we don't have to write any notation afterwards. Just like we did with uh, the work and the power, we had to put joules after work and, and watts after power. We don't have to do that here because when we look at this, these newtons are going to cancel each other out like we've talked about before, and that is why you just put the number down. Okay, so pretty simple math there. 16 divided by 32 is going to give you 0.5. Now what I need you to do is pause the video and write these down. Try to figure them out on your own. You know, you can use your calculator and then start the video back up and I'll double check your answers, make sure everything's okay. All right, so go ahead, pause the video now and uh, we can do this. All right, so we're back. Let's check your answers here. Get out my calculator. And let's see, 360 divided by 90 equals 4. So that's just going to be 4. So 360 divided by 90 equals 4. And that's it. You don't have to put any notation after it. Okay? So let's go with the next one. 104 divided by 8 equals I hope you got 13, because that's what I got, okay? Next one is going to be 468 divided by 12 equals, yeah, you got it, 39. Okay, so 39. And then the next one, we're going to have 108 divided by 4 equals, that's 27. Okay, so we have all these different numbers. What you need to realize, though, is the higher the number, the more of a mechanical advantage there is. Okay, so of these, 39 is the highest number. So that means it's got the most mechanical advantage. Maybe like a, a crowbar or something, because a crowbar has a high mechanical advantage. So I hope this was helpful. If you get stuck, just come up with you know new equations of your own here. And, parts of the equation, not the actual equation. I mean like the numbers. So come up with your own numbers and try to figure them out. Have somebody else maybe do it for you. That's cool, all right? So now we're going to move on to the efficiency equation. So get ready for that. Once again, not very difficult. OK, guys, so now we're going to work on efficiency. Efficiency is going to tell us how well a machine is going to work, how much work we can get out of it. Okay, Some are going to be more efficient, some are going to be less efficient. So the output work done by a machine will never exceed the input work. And this is basically due to friction. Okay, A lot of this energy is going to be lost in the form of heat, which can't be used. This is why we use grease and oil on machinery, to try to increase the efficiency. Okay. Efficiency of a machine is just the ratio of the output work to the input work. So that's why we're going to make it as a percent. All right, so here's the, the equation. Once again, it's one of those ones where we do the output work first and then the input work. So we're going to take the output work divided by the input work. And as we've talked about before, 
work is calculated in joules. Then we're going to multiply it by 100 and then add percent to it. We're not going to multiply it by 100 percent because that does something that we don't want, and I'll explain that here in a minute. So let's try this first one here. And this is the actual equation. So if you're going to write this down, this is what it is. Efficiency equals uh, the work out or output work over the work in or the input work. So let's do this first one. Once again, input then output. It almost seems like they're trying to confuse you, but it's just the way it's written. So we're going to take the right-hand side divided by the left-hand side. So let's do that here. We'll take 72 divided by 85, okay, and that's going to give us 0.847, okay, so far so good. Now we're going to do this, multiply it by 100, and that gives us 84.7. Are we done? Right, we're not done. We have to add the percent sign, okay, so percent. 84.7%. Not bad, okay? So let's do another one. 57 divided by 66 equals 0.863. Okay? And then we're going to multiply that by 100. And that's 86.3%. Percent. So look at the rest of these. You've got three more. Go ahead and pause the video, write these down, try to figure them out, and then when you start it back up, we'll do them together. All right, so go ahead and pause the video. All right, so I assume you got all these done, so let's go over them together, okay? Now, 74 divided by 97 equals 0.762, okay? Then we're going to multiply that by 100. It's 76.2 percent. Now, the reason why we multiply it by 100 and not 100 percent is if we take 0.762 and multiply it by 100 percent, what are we going to get? 0.762. So that's why we multiply it by 100 and then put the percentage after it. Okay, with this next one, just looking at those numbers, 43 and you're going to divide by 45, can you like think of how it's going to turn out. Do you think it's going to be a high number or a low number? Okay, it's going to be a high number because they're so close. So let's try it out and see what we get. So 43 divided by 45 equals 0.955. Okay, and then we multiply that by 100 and we get 95.5. Okay, last one. So 21 divided by 27 equals 0.777. Okay, multiply it by 100. I don't even know why I'm using the calculator, it's obvious. So it's 77.7%. But I use the calculator for each one of them just like I expect you to use the calculator for each of them. Even though you might know it, double check it with the calculator because you don't want to get a wrong answer. You know, and mistakes happen, I understand that. So just double check it with the calculator. Okay, so this is just the efficiency equation. Not too bad, okay? You, once you get through it and you figure this stuff out and you've walked through it a couple times, you're going to do fine, okay? So thanks for coming. See you next time.